right, it's Happening Fishing Friends, and welcome to another episode. My name is Devin from Devo's Fishing. We're going to talk about a subject that seems really easy from the outside, right? Hooking a fish, keeping that fish pinned on the way back to the boat. Throw the lure out, it eats it, you reel it back in. Problem solved, right? Well, then why do so many people get upset when they lose a fish? Oh, no. He came off. No way. Oh, we had one. Back up a step, why did they lose that fish? Well, you often hear people talk about this in a few different parts. The line's too strong, or you were using the wrong hook, or it's just too stiff of a rod. But what does all that mean? How do you really tie all that together? Take a second and think of something that comes in a set of three. Right? You got it? Now that thing wouldn't be complete if it didn't have all three. Peanut butter and jelly sandwich, for example. If you didn't have the bread, it would just be a slop of peanut butter and jelly. It's not good for anyone. Three Stooges wouldn't have got where they were without Mo, and well, how about the Three Little Pigs? That story would have been considerably different if they didn't have the well-determined brother that decided to take the long road and make his house out of bricks properly, right? And the big bad wolf blew down the second pig's house made of sticks and gobbled up both the pigs. The end. Dramatic difference in that ending, right? Yeah, it turned out a little bit different for those piggies. Well, the same thing goes for fishing. You see, fishing is not like math. Take three minus one, you're always gonna end up with two. No matter what, period. One simple answer. Fishing's not that way, it's more like art. I asked three different people to paint a largemouth bass. When they turn their paintings around, they will have a largemouth bass. However, each one will look different. Fishing is the same way. When you talk about hooking a fish, keeping it pinned and fighting it back to the boat, you ready? The secret, the big secret, here it is. There is no secret. The concept of getting the fish hooked and getting it reeled all the way back to the boat without losing it really depends on three important things. Your hook selection, your line selection, and your rod selection. So after we've discussed each one of those items individually, let's take a look at some common setups and combos that people use and talk about the slight variances that you can make to those to ensure you're increasing your hookup ratio. So first let's start with the rod. This is the most expensive and hardest to change for people out of the three because of the cost. You might have a budget to stick to or you might be a younger angler and you just can't go out and buy 27 different combinations. So you can make slight changes to your line and hook, but you have to understand the rod that you have and what strengths and weaknesses that rod has. Now, when you look at rods, you wanna break it down into two main parts, the power of the rod and the action of the rod. And this is something we've talked about before and I'll leave a link to that up here case you want to go into an in-depth discussion on how that works, but when it comes to the hook set and keeping that fish pinned, the power of the rod is going to make a difference. If you have a heavier power rod, meaning it takes more force to actually flex that rod, if you have a, a real stretchy line, think of what that's going to do. Now, if you have a rod that's a lighter power, it means it's not going to take very much force at all to start bending the rod. Now, you also have to take into consideration the action of your rod. Now, the action, if you have a faster action, it means that it's going to bend closer to the tip and you're going to get into the backbone of that rod quicker than say a moderate action rod which means it's not going to actually start bending until you get closer to the middle of the rod meaning it's going to take more bend in that rod a longer time before it actually gets into the strong backbone the hook setting power of your rod the second part of this equation is your line line plays an important factor and it's easier to change than your rod being less expensive but it's just as important. And this is the part you hear most people talk about. Well, if you're running this, you wanna make sure you run mono. If you're frogging, for example, you wanna always run braid, but why, what's it mean? Well, what lures can I really pair with a line that doesn't stretch? I don't have any with me, but 100% fluorocarbon stretches a little bit less than that. And then as we move down into the copolymers and the monofilaments, they stretch the most, but that can be beneficial. Now take, for example, if I tie a piece of string to a, a door handle and I pull that string, it breaks pretty easy, right? Well, if I tie a rubber band to that door handle and pull it, I can't break the rubber band, right? It's just going to stretch. Same thing goes for when you hook that fish. You have a, a real stiff, non-stretchable line. I'm either going to break the line, straighten a hook, or it's not going to have enough give in it, and that fish is going to get to a point where that line goes slack and he throws the lure. That's where lines like this come into play when they've got a little bit of stretch and give. Yeah, we're starting to see this come together, right? The final piece of the equation is... Your hook selection. If you're having a day where you just can't quite seem to hook a fish, pay attention when you actually get one hooked and brought in. It'll tell you a lot. If you're not getting all the way through the fish's mouth, maybe you're using too heavy of a hook. You see, something like this, a five-out flipping hook is gonna take a pretty stout setup 
to drive that thick wire through a fish's mouth, through all that gristle, all the hard stuff, you know. Whereas opposed to something like this, a little size four octopus hook doesn't take much force. That's why you see people fish drop shots, rods with more of a bend, a lighter line. It doesn't take as much force and power to get that through a fish's mouth. So now that we've looked at all three of these individually, how does this all come together in the big picture? Let's take a look at some setups. So to help with today's discussion, I grabbed a few of my setups to walk you through how I have mine put together and some things that you can think about changing in yours if you're still having issues with your hookup ratio that should hopefully help you out. Now, keep in mind, this is all personal preference. The way I have mine set up is not the right or wrong way. It's just my way. You might have a way that's completely different but works for you. That's fine. There's other things that come into play here, like your rod length, the way you set the hook. Just wanna give you some food for thought to help you improve your hookup ratio. So my jig and Texas rod, I have this set up on a seven foot heavy fast action rod, but I go with a copolymer line, a fluorocarbon coated line that's got a decent amount of stretch. Think about it. With your jig and Texas rig setups, you're casting it out, flipping it out, pitching it out, you're letting that fish eat the bait, right? You're really feeling it. Oh, he's got it, he's got it. Boom, you're setting that hook. So you can get away with a rod that's a little bit stiffer, but you want to have just a little bit of flex in your line. Because as you're fighting that fish back, remember that you want to have a bend in your rod or a line that can absorb that shock. Because as you're fighting that fish, and if your rod goes straight and that line goes limp, that's a perfect time for that fish to come off, right? You've all seen the fish. You reel them in and literally the, the bait falls out or there's a, a hole there where the, the hook had a whole bunch of room in there. That means if at any time you let pressure off that fish, you could have easily lost it. So if you're running a real stiff rod for your jig and Texas rig set up with, say, braid, you might have the issue of pulling that bait out too soon. You're not giving the fish enough time to eat it. Or if you're losing it on the way to the boat, you just might not have enough bend to fight that fish. So you might want to consider going to maybe a copolymer line or going to just a little bit softer rod if you're having trouble with your jig and Texas rigs. Next is the old moving bait rod. So for my moving baits, chatter baits, spinner baits, the single hook baits that move, swim jigs, I use a little bit longer seven foot three medium heavy rod. Now this again is a fast tip, but it's a little bit softer tip, so it's more of a moderate fast. I go up that same line, the copolymer, the fluorocarbon coated line. Now the big difference with a moving bait is it's moving. You don't have that luxury of waiting, letting the fish eat it, holding, boom, setting the hook. So you wanna have a setup with a little bit more given, a rod that's got a little bit more bend, closer to a moderate fast, I would say, or a line that's got just a little bit more give, because if you have a, a real stiff rod with a line that has no give, you're gonna have trouble pulling the bait out of the fish's mouth. So that's something to think about and consider on your moving bait setup. Cranking! This is the basis for a lot of debate. I've heard so many people say, for cranking, you have to have a glass rod with monofilament. Well. I don't think that's necessarily right for me. Maybe it works for you, but the things to think about on a crankbait rod, a moderate rod is, is great to have, but I think if you're pairing that with a monofilament, you're gonna miss quite a few fish. Now, if you're running something like I am, this is a medium power, fast graphite rod. It's still got a decent amount of bend in it, but to compensate with that, I think a monofilament or a copolymer on this is perfect. You've got the rod to bend, You've got the line that's got some give to make sure you're not ripping these little trebles out of the fish's mouth, right? A true moderate action rod is gonna have a lot of bend. So the reason a lot of guys have been going to a braid is because that bend is gonna delay bite detection, but that braid is gonna counteract that. So especially if you're making really long casts with the crankbait, it ensures that you're gonna be able to get those treble hooks penetrated into the fish's mouth. If you're using a real, people say it feels like a pool noodle, fishing a rod like that, with monofilament, with a long cast, you set the hook, you've got the stretch of the line, you've got the bend of the rod, you just might not be getting penetration and losing those fish. So that's something to think about on your crankbait setups. Last but not least is the old spinning setup. Now, for me, I don't think there's any other way to go on your spinning setup than braid to a leader. The reason why. The sensitivity of the braid is unmatched, right? And when you're going with these little itsy bitsy finesse lures, drop shots, smaller shaky heads, it's gonna be a real subtle bite a lot of times. They'll just kind of suck it up and you've gotta be able to feel those real subtle bites. Now, to counteract that, you're often gonna use a rod that's a lighter power with more of a bend. So you've got the, the rod to actually fight that fish back. Let's say you don't have that, you just have one medium power graphite rod. You can go to running a straight 
copolymer or even a monofilament if your rod is a little bit stiffer than normal to help counteract that. It's all kind of a give and take. A stiffer rod, you might want to go with a, a line that's got a little bit more give. Or if you're going with a braid, doesn't have any stretch, you might want to go with a rod that's got a little bit more give. They have to work together for you. So think about that the next time and especially watch the fish as you get them in. If there's a hole in the fish's mouth, you might have too stiff of a rod with a line that doesn't have enough stretch and you're just opening that hole. You're ripping, ripping the fish's mouth. On the opposite side of that spectrum, if you just can't seem to get hook penetration, it's just barely in there, you might need to go to a little bit stiff rod or some line that's got a little bit less flex to it. So I'd like you all to take a minute and let me know below. Comment below and let me know, have you ever changed anything with your setups to increase your hookup ratio? I hope this helped you all out. Now, if you've not already, please subscribe to the Cast King channel for more informative videos just like this one. Until next time. Hey!